In this section, we will be looking at the graphs of polynomial functions. So we know that to find the x-intercept, we need to set the y equal to 0, solve for x. To find the y-intercept, we need to set the x equal to 0 and solve for y. So for our first example, let's find the x and y-intercepts for um, each of these polynomial functions. So let's start with the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we need to y, we need to set the y, which is same thing as f of x, equal to 0 and solve for x. So we're going to set the entire left-hand side, the f of x equal to 0, and we have 0 equals to x minus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 5, and by the zero product property, the values of x are 4, negative 2, and positive 5. So our x-intercepts are going to be 4 comma 0, negative 2 comma 0, and 5 comma 0. The y-intercepts, to find the y-intercept, we need to set the x value equal to 0 and solve for y. So we have uh, f of 0. Remember, x, the parentheses contains the input or the x value. So if we set the x value equal to 0 for proper notation, we're going to write f of 0. And that equals to 0 minus 4 times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 5. And this is going to be negative 4 times 2 times negative 5. Um, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 5 is 40. So our y-intercept is going to be the ordered pair 0, comma, 40. In the next example, we want to do the same thing. We want to find the x-intercept and y-intercept. So for the x-intercept, we are going to set the y value equal to 0. y is the same thing as f of x. And then to find the y-intercept, we are going to set the x value equal to 0 and solve for y. So here, um, we're going to set, well, in, in this case, it's g of x. So we're going to set the whole left-hand side equal to 0. And we have 3x to the fourth plus 15x cubed plus 12x squared. OK, so the first thing we want to do is we want to try and factor this. And when we factor, we're looking for the GCF, or the greatest common factor. So between 3, 15, and 12, uh, the largest number that can go into those is 3. Between the x to the fourth, 15x cubed, and 12x squared, the largest uh, term we can factor out is an x squared. So our GCF is going to be 3x squared. Now we learned back, I think it was in like chapter 2, that when you have the GCF, for one, we are going to write the GCF on the outside. So the GCF is 3x squared. It doesn't just disappear. We're going to write that on the outside of the parentheses. And in the parentheses, to, to determine what's left over, factoring is dividing. So when we factor, we divide each of these terms by 3x squared. So we have uh, 1 and x to the fourth over x squared is going to be an x squared. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and x cubed over x squared is x. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and then x squared divided by x squared, that's, that's 1. So this is what's left over. Now we have to keep factoring. So we have 0 equals to 3x squared. The two numbers that multiply to be 4 and add up to be 5 are going to be 4 and 1. So remember, we're looking for the numbers which multiply to 4, add up to be 5, which are 4 and 1. By the zero product property, we set each term equal to 0. So let's do the easy ones first. Um, if I set x plus 1 equal to 0, I get x equals to negative 1. If I set x plus 4 equal to 0, I get x equals to negative 4. Now, if I set 3x squared equal to 0, so I have 3x squared equals to 0, um, I divide by 3, I square root that, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to get x equals to 0. The only way something can multiply uh, with a constant to give you a 0 is if the x was 0. So our x-intercepts, and I'm kind of running out of room here, but our answer, our, our x-intercepts are going to be 0, comma, 0, negative 4, comma, 0, and negative 1, comma, 0. And just keep in mind that for all x-intercepts, the y value is going to be 0. The second one should be a little bit easier. To get the y-intercept, we just set the x value equal to 0. And the x value is the input, or what is contained in the parentheses. So we're going to have g of 0 equals to 3 times 0 to the fourth plus 15 times 0 cubed plus 12 times 0 squared. So this gives you 0, this gives you 0, this gives you 0. So g of 0 is just going to be 0. So our y-intercept is going to be 0, comma 0. OK, so take a look at those examples. Think of questions for, for class. Now let's talk about the behavior of an x-intercept. 
Okay, so the behavior of a graph at an x-intercept. And that determines the multipl multiplicity at that point. And I'll talk about multiplicity later on, but let's just look at uh, some basic, basic shapes. So if the graph crosses the x-axis like this, it, it simply crosses it, there is a multiplicity of one. Okay, it's a single zero. So here, the graph is uh, crossing the x-axis. So when it just crosses the x-axis, then the and, and let's say it does it at the point A, the factor is just going to be x minus A. Okay, and the, the degree of it is going to be one. That's what I mean by multiplicity. Multiplicity means what is a degree? So this has a degree of one. If the graph touches the x-axis and then it goes the other way without crossing it, that is going to have a multiplicity of two. Okay, so in this case, let's say the graph, uh, it touches the x-axis here at the point A and then it goes the other way, then f of x is going to equal to x minus a to the second power. So that has a degree of two, multiplicity of two, degree of two. If the, uh, if at the zero, the graph makes like this snaky shape, then that is going to have a multiplicity of three. So if the graph makes the snaky shape at the point A, then the factor is going to be x minus A, and it's going to, ha going to have a degree of three. Okay, so crosses it, degree of one, touches it and goes the other way, degree of two, makes a snaky shape at the x-axis, degree of three. Now we also have some higher degrees, like let's say we have uh, to the fourth power or to the sixth or to the eighth power. What's going to happen is the graph is still going to touch the x-axis and bounce off, but uh, it's going to get flatter and flatter the higher and higher these degrees go. Same thing for the odd degrees. The higher and higher these degrees go, the, the snaky shape is going to get flatter and flatter. But we're mainly going to be dealing with a multiplicity of one, two, and three. So the higher degrees, it's good to be aware that you know those shapes they look like these, but we're not going to be covering those um, in this in this class. Now, this part I'm going to keep referring back to over and over again. The equation of a polynomial function is going to be f of x equals to x minus r1 times x minus r2 times x minus r3, uh, where the roots are r1, r2, and r3. And the roots, this is where the so the, the roots are the same thing as zeros, and both of these. This is where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, this is where the graph crosses the x-axis. These are that th those are those are our roots, which are also called our zeros. And the the basic polynomial function is going to look like this. So determine the equation of the graph below. Now first, let's identify our zeros. So we have a zero here, we have a zero here, and we have a zero there. A zero same thing as a root, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. So step one is identify the zeros. Okay, step one, we're going to identify the zeros. I'll, I'll, I'll write the steps over here. Step one, identify the zeros. Now at each zero, we have to identify the multiplicity. Okay, so identify the multiplicity at each zero. So here, the graph simply crosses uh, the x-axis at negative three. So this has a multiplicity equal to one. Here, it makes a snaky shape. So at this point, the multiplicity equals to three. And here, uh, it makes that U-shape where the graph touches the x-axis and bounces off. So this is going to have a multiplicity of two. Let me write that a little bit better. This has a multiplicity of two. Okay, so now that we identified the zeros, we identified the multiplicities, let's go through and write the uh, polynomial function. So we have f of x equals two, we always have that a value, times x minus the first root, so our first root is negative three, and x minus negative three is going to become x plus three, and it has a multiplicity of one. At negative one, it makes a snaky shape. So that's going to be x minus negative one, which is x plus one with a multiplicity of three, so degree of three. And at x equals to two, so that's going to be x minus two, the 
graph has that U shape, so it, it touches it and bounces off, and that has a multiplicity of two. So we have a times x minus negative three, which is x plus three, times x minus negative one, which is x plus one, but that has a degree of three, and then this x minus two has a degree of two. So it's always x minus whatever the root or the zero is. Okay, well, we're not quite done because we still have to find out what is the a value. So in order to find the a value, we need to plug in a point that's on the graph. And a point that we pick has to be an exact point. It can't be an approximation. Like here, we have one comma, whatever this point is. It might be like 31, might be 32. We don't know. We can't approximate. So the easiest thing to do is to pick the y-intercept in this case. So three, um, plug in the y-intercept. OK, so your y-intercept, so the point we're going to plug in is the y-intercept, which is the point 0, comma 10. So the x value is 0 and the y value is 10. And we're going to plug it in to this polynomial function. So we're going to get f of x equals to, well, f of x is 0, so I'm, I'm actually going to put f of 0. OK, now what is the y value? So f of 0 is actually 10, so I'm not going to even write f of 0. I'm going to replace this entire left-hand side with the corresponding y value, which is 10, because that's what f of 0 equals to. And when y equals to 10, x equals to 0. So we have 0 plus 3 squared times 0 plus 1 cubed times 0 minus 4 or 0 minus 2 squared. OK, so we have we replace the y value with 0, replace the x value, y value with 10 and the x value with 0 in order to find the a. So now let's keep simplifying. Um, order of operations is do the parentheses first, so this is 3 squared, 0 plus 1 is 1 cubed, 0 minus 2 is negative 2 squared. So this is 10, 3 squared is 9, so we got 8 times 9, 1 cubed is 1, and negative 2 squared is 4. So we have 10 equals to 36a, then we divide both sides by 36, and a is going to be, so 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5, and 36 divided by 2 is going to be 18. So we are going to end up with a equals to 5 over 18. And that is going to be the a value. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I take it back. Please ignore what I said. The first one has a, a multiplicity of one, so I'm so sorry. This should be a multiplicity of one. So this should be a this should be a three, and three times four. This should be a twelve. I'm so sorry. And if I divide both sides by twelve, this actually gives me five over six. So, so ten divided by two is five. Twelve divided by two is six. So a, should, a is going to be five sixth. So my final equation is going to be this thing up there, except I'm going to replace the a value with a 5 over 6. So my final equation is going to be um, f of x equals to my a value, which is 5 over 6, times x plus 3 to the first power, which is just going to be x plus 3, times x plus 1 to the third power, times x minus 2 to the second power. Now, we will do more examples in class, but the main thing we have to know here is when you cross, it's a multiplicity of 1. When it's a snake, multiplicity of 3. When it's a U-shape, multiplicity of 2. And it's always going to be x minus the 0. So x minus negative 3, that's how we get the x plus 3. x minus negative 1, we get x plus 1. x minus 2, we get just x minus 2. OK, so the next couple of examples, so uh, these two here, we will do in class.